In section 7.1, we'll be focusing on triangle application theorems. These theorems may seem a bit straightforward to you as I present them to you today. However, you will be applying these theorems to more complicated and complex problems in the near future. So please make sure that you have a strong understanding of them and that you know when to apply these theorems. Let's first talk about the exterior angle. We've talked about this before when we've discussed the exterior angle inequality. An exterior angle is an angle that is both adjacent to and supplementary to an interior angle of the polygon. So if I were to draw a triangle over here and extend one of the sides to create an exterior angle, I'm going to highlight the exterior angle in red here. Please note that it is adjacent to or next to and supplementary to that interior angle that I put a dot in. That's our definition. This exterior angle theorem is extremely important because it takes the inequality that we've discussed in the past a little bit further. And it states that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of the remote interior angles. This idea can be proved using the fact that in any triangle, all three angles of the triangle must add up to 180 degrees, as well as using supplementary angles. Let's talk about why the sum of the measures of three angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. I'll start off by drawing a triangle and label the triangle ABC. We want to prove that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C equals 180 degrees. According to the parallel postulate, there exists exactly one line through point A that's parallel to line BC. So we can draw something like this. Because of the straight angle at the top, we can say that those three angles, 1, 2, and 3, must add up to 180 degrees. But since we're working with those parallel lines, we can get some congruent angles as a result. So we can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle B because those are alternate interior angles. And we can say that angle 3 is congruent to angle C because that's another pair of alternate interior angles. So we can put 1 by angle B and we could put a 3 by angle C. And therefore, angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 must equal 180 degrees. Moving on to the proof of why the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of the remote interior angles. I've drawn a triangle here with exterior angle 1. and We want to prove that angle 1 is equal to angle D plus angle E, which are the remote interior angles. Based off of what we just talked about with all three angles of a triangle, having a sum of 180 degrees, we can say that angle D plus angle E plus angle 2 is equal to 180. And then since 1 and 2 are supplementary angles, we can say that angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees as well. Let's subtract angle 2 from both sides of the equation so we know that angle 1 is equal to 180 minus angle 2. Let's go back to our first equation and let's subtract angle 2 from both sides of the equation. So we know that angle D plus angle E must equal 180 degrees minus angle 2. Well, if we notice here, angle 1 and angle D plus angle E are equal to the same thing. They're both equal to 180 minus angle 2. For our first example, let's go ahead and label our diagram with our given information. And what we want to find in the end is the measure of angle OPQ which is our exterior angle in the diagram. Using the theorem that we just talked about, we should recognize that that angle is an exterior angle and that this yellow angle and this purple angle are remote interior angles in the diagram. So we can use our new theorem and state that the measure of the exterior angle, which is represented by 6x, is equal to the sum of the measures of the remote interior angles. So we can add 2x plus 100 minus x for that. We get that x has a value of 20, but in the end we want to find the measure of angle OPQ. So we can substitute x back in, and we end up getting that 120 degrees is the measure of our angle. 
Now we have another theorem that we should talk about here, and it's the midline theorem. Let's first talk about what a midline is. A midline is going to be a segment that is formed by joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle, and this segment is parallel to the third side. We know if we have a midline that the midline is parallel to the third side and the midline's length is one half of the length of the third side. But let's talk about where this theorem comes from. Let's extend line HM through point M to some point P so that we have segments MP and HM congruent. P has now been established, so points P and K determine line PK. We know that segment GM is congruent to segment KM because of the midpoint, and that angle GMH is congruent to angle KMP because vertical angles are congruent. Therefore, we can say that triangle GMH is congruent to triangle KMP by side angle side. By CPCTC, we can say that angle G is congruent to angle PKM. Therefore, we can say that line PK is parallel to line GH, because if alternate interior angles are congruent, we get parallel lines. By CPCTC, we can say that segment PK is congruent to segment GH. And then if we use the transitive property, we eventually get segments PK and HJ to be congruent. Therefore, those opposite sides, segments HJ and PK, are both congruent and parallel, so we can say that that figure PKJH is a parallelogram. Therefore, we know that lines HP and JK are parallel, and eventually using substitution, we can say that segment HM is half of segment JK. So for this example here, it's a midline example. Let's go ahead and fill in the givens. And please note, I would have to give you this information as well. I would have to tell you that B is the midpoint of AD. So let's go ahead and mark that in our diagram at this time. So B is the midpoint of AD. So let's put tick marks there. And then if C is the midpoint of AE, let's go ahead and put tick marks there to show that. We now know that BC is a midline because it is a segment that is formed by connecting the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. Now do you see the third side that remains? It's DE. So one thing we know is that the midline's length is one half the length of the third side. So if the midline is 6, then the third side must have a length of 12. Now one other thing we know is that the midline is parallel to the third side. So from that, we can find the measures of the missing angles. Let's highlight those purple angles there because we want to find the measure of angle ABC. Since those two lines are parallel, we know that we have some corresponding angles that are congruent. So the measure of angle ABC is also 35 degrees. Now let's find the measure of angle ACB. Well, ACB is located in that top triangle ABC. And in any triangle, we know that three angles of the triangle must add up to 180 degrees. We know one angle is 60 degrees and the other angle is 35 degrees. So if we subtract the measures of those two angles from 180 degrees, we're left with our angle of 85 degrees for the measure of angle ACB. And last, we want to find the measure of angle AED. Well, those two blue angles there are corresponding angles again due to the fact that we have the parallel lines, which means that they are congruent. We'll pick back up with the second part of the notes in just a moment.